Hello, everyone, and thank you and welcome to the Teacher Ease webinar series. We're going to talk about best practices and customer stories on these, on these webinar series with Teacher Ease. This particular webinar, the right technology to make standards based learning practical, is going to be with Chicago Heights and Franklin Pierce school districts sharing how they're using Teacher Ease to make it practical. Now, my name is Joe Granda. I'll be the moderator for today's session. I'm with Common Goal Systems. We're the provider of School Insight SIS and Teacher Ease software for standards-based learning. Our agenda today is we're going to be talk, we're going to be hearing firsthand from school district curriculum leaders on how they're using Teacher Ease. In particular, their transition with standards-based learning and their journey. Now, what's interesting is they both have slightly different journeys. Chicago Heights is gonna share how they transitioned and started from the kindergarten level and worked their way up. Franklin Pierce, on the other hand, they'd been doing standards-based grading for quite some time and they came to us and they came from the middle school and high school side of things and approached it there. So what you're gonna see are the whole K through 12 spectrum, and they're both on similar journeys, but different journeys. But they're using a similar tool, which is Teacher Ease. Also know that we're gonna have a Q&A at the end. And uh, so that we hope that we'll have 10 to 15 minutes to get your questions. So those questions, do know that many of you had posed some questions during the registration process. And thank you so much. We'll try to answer those. Many of those questions will be answered during the session. Also know we want you to ask some more questions. So we, we want this to be interactive. There's a question box at the bottom of your Zoom and you can enter your questions and we will save those up and answer as many as we can during the session. Uh, the last piece here is do know that we're recording the session. So uh, if you're, wondering if I can share this with your peers. Absolutely. So we'll have the recording ready to go. Now we've got two great speakers here. Uh, Michelle Mager from, from Chicago Heights. Now she's got several master's degrees. I was wondering if you add up the master's degrees, do they turn into a doctorate degree? I don't know, but um, she's very, very well uh, educated in, in the space and she'll she'll tell you a bit about herself uh, in in her session and at the same time we've got Dr. Annette Burnett now she she's coming from Franklin Pierce and what's interesting is we've got her coming in from the state of Washington so we got Illinois Washington so this is a standards based grading story not not a state centric story and she's going to share with you what they're doing and they've been doing this for quite some time and again, we've got another smart lady on the line as well. So she's gonna share her experience at Franklin Pierce. So let's, let's get into it. Cause you don't wanna hear from me. You wanna hear from Michelle and Annette. So we're gonna start off with Chicago Heights. They're using teacher ease and it started off with, with using our school insight sys. And she, she, went through and the school district went through a transition to standards-based grading. So she's gonna share that with you. So with that, Michelle, it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Joe, for the nice introduction. And thank you for inviting me to share today. Um, I just wanna say what an amazing partnership it's been with Teacher Ease and Common Goal Systems. You guys have been wonderful. So we wouldn't have been able to do this as smoothly as we did without that partnership. So <laughs> um, yes, our journey began, well, I will say I was a kindergarten teacher for most of my teaching career. And I joined Chicago Heights School District as a kindergarten teacher. So I was familiar with that grade level. And then when I became the curriculum instructional specialist for the district, um, one of the things that I wanted to do was take a closer look at grade reporting. Uh, we just needed a better tool to communicate more accurately to parents about what our students were learning 
and also to hold teachers a little more accountable and have some consistency in what was being taught at the grade level. So that's how we started our journey, um, was looking at the kindergarten report card. And um, we began with doing some research at what was going on with grading and reporting out there at a national level. We really looked all across the country as far as you know what everyone was doing now so that when we were updating, we were current and research-based with our decisions. And fortunately, Teacher Ease was right there for us and help us um, with the process. Um, next slide, I guess, Joe. So as I stated, our first step was with kindergarten. Um, and I created, a, I got a team of teachers, team of kindergarten teachers to take on the task. And kindergarten was kind of a different animal because it doesn't use, at our district anyway, it doesn't use a grade book. So we had more of a skills-based report card that we wanted to use. So we needed to create some assessment lists because we did not have a grade book. And Teacher Ease um, was able to allow us, if you can see on the slide, to show skills that kindergartens, kindergarten students were um, needing to perform on. So you see the letters, being able to circle what letters they knew, what sounds they knew, what numbers they knew, the sounds that they knew. Um, and all those options were available for us through Teacher Ease. We also could create our own grading scales that you see at the top. So we had overall grades, we had some SEL grades, and then we had specific skill grades, all available through Teacher Ease. <clears throat> and then once we had um, our kindergarten report card created, it, we had such tremendous feedback. It was received so well, not only by our teachers, but by the community, by parents, um, and even the, the students were excited because they knew exactly what they needed to learn in school. Um, so then we decided to roll out the next grade level, which was first grade. And what worked for us in that process is that it allowed the class that we had started in kindergarten to follow the report card into first grade. So when those kindergarten students who had had the standards-based report card moved to first grade, we had it ready for them in first grade. And um, it just, it worked really well. So the, the report card ended up following that class. We had a transition as a team um, when developing our new report cards from grades one through five. We had to switch over to using the grade book, um, which was just a little bit different in our process. So what we needed to do was take a more specific look at the standards, at the Common Core standards, and create learning targets based on those standards. And we really worked hard to make sure, because you cannot in any way put every standard on a report card. So you really do have to choose carefully the learning targets that will show and cover all of those standards. And we did create documents for the teachers that would align the learning target with what standards were kind of umbrellaed underneath that learning target, if that makes sense. Um, and Teacher Ease really guided me through this process in how to set up those learning targets for each overall content area. And we did a lot of research, reading a lot of the um, books and resources that I know we'll share at the end of this webinar, just to help in that process as to far as as far as how many learning targets you want to include in each content um, and kind of how, how that process works. Um, and then once we 
did the standard study and created our most important learning targets for each content area. Teacheries, you know, showed us the way about how to creating assignments within those content areas. And it was extremely user-friendly for teachers. Everything is just plug in and go as far as creating assignments. It's step-by-step, step. it's very self-explanatory. Um, and teachers are really able to customize each assignment that they do and use that assignment for its specific purposes. And you can see here, you know, they can title it, they can type it, the date, um, and then they create their learning targets and they can determine how it's graded or maybe it isn't graded. Maybe it's just practice. Um, so Teacheries really allows you to customize each assignment for that teacher's use. And I think the most important piece to the creating the assignments in the grade book for these report cards are the ability to add the learning targets to each assignment and assessment. This was is so important for the teachers. They are really able to be specific with their grading by choosing any and all learning targets that apply to that assessment. So if you're doing an assessment that is really looking at two or three different learning targets, you can check those three boxes and then you will be able to enter scores for each learning target, which helps make grading very specific and very telling to the teachers and to the parents. And you can see in here, after you've created that assignment and you have linked it to learning targets, you can see right here that there are two columns that state the learning targets, and then you can enter separate scores for those learning targets. You may have students that really do well on one learning target and have mastered that, and you can show that separately than maybe a learning target or standard that they're struggling with and may need some more support. And this translates into the grade book. And you're also able, as you can see, to add specific comments. You know, if we have um, special ed students or students with IEPs, you can um, create a comment that allows it to say that the assignment was modified. And that's another thing that working with teacher ease, you can create your own custom comment list that things that you want to say for your specific district that apply to you. So we have worked and created different comment lists for different grade levels for different purposes. Um, and we just plug those in where they apply. And then once you enter those scores in the grade book, you can see here, this is a, um, an actual grade book. And at the top, I have my big red arrow pointing to the learning target slash standard that kind of umbrellas all of those assignments. So all of the assignments in the blue area at the top are all assignments that are linked to that specific learning target. Now, if you were to scroll further right in that grade book, you would see multiple learning targets, all the learning targets for, I believe we're in reading in this one, um, you would see all of the learning targets and all of the assignments that are linked below each learning target, which is just an amazing way to organize the grade book. And it just allows the teachers to see where they need to do some more assessing um, if necessary, and just allow to track learning trends with those learning targets. And then below, you'll see all of the assignments and their grades. The grades, we use a 4321 skills scale. And so each one is color coded, which makes it very visual, visually simple <laughs> to see which children are struggling, which children are um, 
succeeding. And you can use this to create small groups, identify trends that you need to reteach. Um, it's just very user-friendly for the teacher. You can also see places in this gradebook where you see assignments that aren't being graded, but are just handed in with a little hand in symbol or the little magnifying glass saying they're missing. Um, so a teacher can keep track of those as well. And then on the far left, you see the little circles next to their overall grade and that um, those little donuts, as I know Joe calls them, um, they will show um, how many um, learning targets a student has mastered versus how many they have not mastered yet. So just lots of great information available through the gradebook. Uh, and then another piece in our transition through from traditional to standards-based grading, that Teacher Ease really um, was wonderful at allowing us to transition with our grading scales. And you know, I was learning as I went along here and um, the tech people really supported me on, on um, understanding what my options were as far as how I could grade and what would work. And we moved from um, having a traditional grading scale um, with some standards-based skills underneath to having um, the second in the middle there, you see having the standards-based overall grades with standards-based skill grades, but still relying on a percentage to kind of transition, because I know it's really difficult sometimes for some teachers to let go of that traditional grading scale and um, to, make, to really understand and make that connection with the rubric sc um, scales. So we did have a period where they were kind of using both just to to understand it and to internalize it. And then finally, we moved to the complete standards-based grading scale, which you see at the bottom with the color codes and the um, 4321 learning target, or yeah, skills grades. And what was very unique and very helpful from teacheries is that we had some of these going at one time, <laughs> all of these going at one time in the district. And it was a little overwhelming for a while as we transitioned through, um, but now we are K-5 all the way to the bottom scale for standards-based grading. So it was wonderful tech support. <laughs> And another piece of our puzzle is that we have definitely moved to separating our academic grades from our conduct grades. Uh, right now, we have a brand new middle school building that um, was opened last year. And of course, it was a sad opening for our building because we were all remote learning due to the pandemic. Um, so we have not moved forward with standards-based grading in the middle school, um, we just haven't gotten to that point. However, they have separated the academic from the conduct grades in support of our grading policy in the district. So, you know, Teacher Ease is able to support this, having these grades going on at um, the middle school separate. And then I did speak about our grading policy, which is making a huge difference in the transition from um, traditional to standards-based grading. I think any district that is trying to adopt standards-based grading needs to um, look at their grading policy, if not first, at least while you are transitioning to standards-based grading these changes are kind of at the foundation of standards-based grading. Um, things like practice, calling homework practice, not homework, and not grading practice. Uh, that was very important. It, it made our academic grades more authentic and we didn't see inflated grades due to homework. Uh, we also adopted a no zero policy 
again, zeros in grades are usually more um, because of conduct and not really reflecting academic ability. So we took out zeros from our grade book and now students need to get the work done and earn the grade or it's just incomplete. We also added reassessments and retakes to those students that had lower grades. We wanted to support them in their learning and make grading about learning, not gotcha moments. So we allow for reassessments and retakes and that's been a significant change in our grading policy. And then we also took extra credit out of grading. This also inflates grades and does not reflect true academic ability. So that extra credit is no longer an option. And then, as I said earlier, we did separate our conduct grades from our academic grades. We wanted a true reflection of um, student performance. And sometimes that doesn't always go along with conduct. Um, you can have students that their conduct and behavior is poor, but they can tell you everything that you're teaching in that classroom. So we, we wanted to make sure there was a definite um, break from that. So those were the changes that really um, influenced our grading. And then uh, while doing all of this, I've had nothing but positive feedback from, um, interestingly enough, our students. When the teachers implemented the standards-based grading with the learning targets, the specific goals that we have for them, students were actually saying, oh my goodness, I know what I have to learn now. Instead of just getting a reading grade, I see the seven or eight learning targets that will help me get to a better reading grade, that they understand what they need to learn. And they really want to try it again. Can I do it better? I, I think I can do it better. Can I try again? I really understand now what you're trying to teach me. And so the feedback from students has been tremendous. And the same goes for the feedback from our teachers, the same types of things. You know, my students are understanding that they can work to improve their grade. You know, just because we had a test and they did really poorly, that's not it. You know, learning doesn't just stop when a, when a test is given. You know, we want to, support those students that maybe didn't understand it, have them try some more learning, have them do a little bit more work and come back and see that they can improve their grade if they put forth that effort. And we really focused on feedback. Teachers gave a lot of feedback through standards-based learning and grading. Um, and the students are benefiting, they're understanding, they're not just getting a test back with red marks on it, they're getting feedback so that they can learn better. And that's what grading is all about, right? Showing what they've learned. Um, so yeah, the teachers are very happy with all of our report cards, they're happy with the process. Teacher ease is easy, they plug in the assignments and they don't have to do any more work. They import grades, report cards show up, and send them home and it's been a wonderful process. I love hearing that. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. That, that was very, very informative. I, I've got Franklin Pierce with Annette Burnett as well is here and she's gonna share the, their story on how they're using teacher ease in the standards-based grading space. And you'll, you'll see them using, using teacher ease for instructional intelligence, as well as better communication on mastery progress to families. So with that, Annette, it is yours. Thank you. So we came in our journey a little bit differently. Um, I started in Franklin Pierce six years ago and Franklin Pierce had been on their journey of standards-based grading, had been using a grade book, um, we called online grades, which was designed by a programmer, which is going to become important in the story later, um, who designed the, the standards-based grading 
grade book and the elementary report card exactly how the district wanted it. So that's kind of where I came into the, the story and the journey um, and then help further that as we roll it along. And then you always have that joke, you have a person you're relying on and what happens if they get hit by a bus. And unfortunately he had some health concerns, had to retire. And that was the only programmer we had for the grade book. And so we had to start looking for a product that would meet our needs. And we um, looked, did several different product reviews, did a year of pilot or half a year of piloting um, three different products. Uh, Teacher Ease is one of those products. And on this slide here were some of our non-negotiables, what were we were looking for in a product. And that really helped us decide which one was the best fit for our district based on what we had and what we need moving forward. And so um, standards-based grading, learning grading and reporting are all tied together. And so some of the gradebook products we looked at only um, recorded some, but still per, uh, reported it out a percentage. And we were beyond that in our journey. And so we wanted to make sure that we could clearly communicate that standards-based score coming out. Um, and then some of the other pieces that are on here, I'll talk a little bit more about incomplete, incomplete plus, um, but that is a, a huge part of how we differentiate students who are struggling, students who are not meeting standard um, and being able to have that either part of the system or built into the system in some way. Another one of the pieces is our current SIS. So we do not use Teacher Ease Common Goals Student Information System. Moving away from our SIS was not an option. It does too much in our district. It controls our payroll, all of our teacher stuff. Um, our IT department was like, nope, this is what we're doing. So we had to find a grade book that could complement our SIS and work with our SIS. Next slide, Joe. So it's also where Teacher Ease um, was one of the front runners in the product is they have an easy way for our information from the SIS to get to the just the grade book part of the common goal system. And so we do um, scheduled nightly exports from our SIS. We use one roster. Um, Joe has some other options on here like Clever. Um, but basically our IT department sets up an export. It exports certain information and feeds it into teacher So when teachers log into their grade books, they see student information, they see demographic information, parent, family contact information. Um, there's some other pieces you can upload separately, but kind of the base information is there. So that really fit our needs to have a separate uh, grade book. So the way we rolled out was um, with that one programmer having a having a grade book already for our six through 12 um, teachers, we actually started with middle school and high school rolling out with teacher ease, training our teachers. We had to have parent and student access open right away because they were used to being able to see their grades in real time. Um, we have a piece on athletic eligibility. So once you're in um, high school and you have to have a transcript and you have to have a letter grade and you have to have athletic eligibility, standards-based grading, how do you make that happen? And I'll touch on that in a couple of slides coming up. Um, creating an overall score. So not just reporting out at the standards level, but getting to that content area grade. Um, high school still need that transcript. So we do have a conversion chart that we use after we get through standards-based grading to what is that letter grade on the transcript. And then this year, we're working on moving our middle school kind of back away from that letter grade to a standards-based report card. So this is the first year our sixth graders have had a standards-based report card and next year it'll be sixth and seventh in the following year, six, seven, and eight. And then when you talk about starting something in a pandemic that you didn't know you were starting, last year we rolled out elementary to teacher ease. And this is the first time they have had a uniform grade book. They've all had their own developed grade book systems. But they've had a uniform report card, but now we're asking them to put stuff in the grade book. And I remember my boss saying like, the hardest thing we're gonna do this year is get them into the, the report cards and into the grade book and then pandemic hit after first trimester, right? Um, not the hardest thing we did that year. Uh, so last year we started with elementary. Um, I've been working on using the grade book more as uh, reporting tools. And next year we hope to build on that as we use it for, to show them how they can run reports and do data collection, um, which is really one of the, a, a great functionality of the teacher's grade book. 
And then we're planning on parent and student access since they haven't had um, real-time access to grades and have only had trimester report cards come out. We've kind of put that off, um, but starting to push on either next year, probably towards the end of the year um, or the following year. But the family portal is also great. So when we looked at traditional grade books versus what we had been doing um, in standards-based grading, we use what we call um, the mode of the five most recent scores. And that was something that was important to us. So when we're looking at our standards, we want a body of evidence from our students. And what is the, the mode or the most recent scores from that body of evidence? Because there are gonna be standards that you hit on all throughout your semester, your trimester. And we wanna look at the most recent evidence and the most reliable um, performance for that student. <clears throat> so at the standard level, it will report out the mode. And then that rolls up into what we call our domains. Um, teachers calls them the parent. So when you, you look at the language in yours um, and the language that you use, there is a little bit of a transition. Um, and then one thing I saw in Michelle's slide is it said learning targets. They use learning targets. And there's parts of teachers where you can customize it. So for my teachers, it shows up as standards instead of learning targets, because that's the language we use. So those standards roll up to the domain. The domains are then average for that overall grade. And then um, with the leveling of standards, this was one of the questions I think that came up was, um, when you use a common core standard, how specific can you get in reporting? And so you can have multiple levels for those standards in teacher ease, and then decide what does each level need to calculate at? So for us, we have standards, which are calculated in a mode, which roll up to a domain, which are an average. And so we chose those two different levels for calculation, but you can break that standard down to the components if you wanted to. Um, one of the examples we give is in um, elementary math, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of fractions is one standard. Do we break that down into addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And so we track at each one of those levels is a possibility in teacher ease rather than having that cluster. So our grading scale for high school, we have um, half steps between them. We have the four, three, two, one, zero in elementary. Uh, we use zero because it triggers in the calculation that we've set up. Um, knowing that zeros are not motivators, um, but find that the way that we have set up our calculations, it helps to put those in when, when evidence is missing, so it triggers some of our other interventions. We also use half steps at the high school, middle school for that athletic eligibility GPA calculation piece that you don't get out of using only 4321. So this slide is an example of what does that roll up look like? What does the grade look like when it's coming from the standard? Um, so I have the domain and then the standard. Those are our two levels for the most part. And then the mode is based on the tasks. Those are the assignments or the assessments that the teacher is inputting into the grade book. And so in the example on the right, the student in standard number one scored a two and a three there's no mode, so it's gonna to default to the most recent score. In standard two, there is a mode of two. And then that three and that two are then averaged to the domain to become a 2.5. Then those domains are then averaged for the overall grade. So you see that 2.5, the 2.5 and the one get averaged. So, I talked about athletic eligibility and intervention um, and how can we report that? So because we'd had a homegrown system, we had developed a way to identify students for both of those pieces. And we're really looking for a grade book that could mimic it or had something similar or could recreate it for us. And Teacher Ease was able to recreate it for us. You do get to pay for it though. I'm gonna put that out there. They will do it, <laughs> they can do it. Uh, they have a team of programmers, which is way more than one, um, which was great. So we gave them, this is what we're looking for. 
this is what it means to us, and they set their team on it. So we think of incomplete and incomplete plus, incomplete plus being what would be like the little f. These are students who are only missing one or two standards, who have a score of less than two and one or two standards. So these are students who might have missed an assessment, might have had a bad day, might have been struggling in just one area, can still play um, sports. They're not failing the course, even though they have a couple of standards that are out of compliance. Um, intervention is typically with their teacher, can be done in um, what we have ASP, academic success uh, program um, or learning lab. Incomplete, they have significant gaps. So this is a student we wanna pull for intervention, gonna need some more structured time. They have multiple standards out of compliance or have several low scores that get their overall grade below a 2.0. And so this is what we use in our middle school and high school to help us differentiate that, um, pull those students for intervention. As we're looking at summer school right now, we are designing summer school for students who have incomplete pluses. So they only need a little bit of summer school, a little bit of time, a little bit of instruction, a little bit of reassessment. And our incompletes we're really looking at potentially retaking the whole course. So here's an example using the grade book. So you can see the domain, um, our I is reading information, and then the two standards, 8.1 and 8.3, <clears throat> and then writing, and the four standards that the teacher has assessed using writing. So if I'm looking across this 2.07 incomplete, the student is incomplete because they have three standards that are less than a two, the 8.1, the 8.2, and the 8.8. As opposed to the second student who has an incomplete plus, they've got good scores going across. They only have one student, one standard, W8.8, that's out of compliance. So the grade book is color coded. It is uh, sortable. If you see those little bitty gray air, uh, arrows up there, you can toggle them so that it'll pull students up who are um, not performing as well you can create differentiated assignments based on that group of students so that it only shows for the students who need that extra support. So you can create an assignment based on intervention, uh, continued learning and extension all in the same assignment. Um, you can also create an assignment only for a subset of students and nobody else sees that other than the students it's been assigned to. So the gradebook is super flexible in being able to identify kids just based on toggling, creating differentiated assignments. Um, and then what the student and the parent sees on the portal are only those things assigned to them. So they're not wondering, why is this excused for me and not excused for you, um, is a great tool. So one of um, the things in our transition is realizing we hadn't had a, a way to pull out of online grades what standards we'd had uploaded, how are they being used, um, how many did we have, and um, were we really focused and targeted on the number of standards that we were assessing, um, requiring, and when that overall grade rolls out, is that really a compilation of what the student needs to complete in the, in the class? So our aha comes on the next page. Uh, in teacheries, there are some really great reports that will tell you that information. And we found we had a course with 150 standards for a semester 90 day course. Um, and so when we believe in um, multiple opportunities to show proficiency, 150 standards in 90 days is, is rough. And so being able to look at that and pull that data apart and say, are you using all 150? If these are essential, how are we covering them? If we are, great. But if we're not, what are we really wanting to get at in this course and making sure that's what we put into the system? We also hadn't had a chance to review our standards um, and had some slip in that were not SBLG, like writes their name in the lab notebook. And so the system also allows us to pull out those standards, look at them, review them, and edit them. So we've been doing a, an edit process all along the way of what standards are uploaded. So this is an example of the report we used with teacher ease standards coverage by assignments. So you can pull for a course, what standards are uploaded, how many times were they used, what assignments were they used on those, those standards. 
And so this is um, an NGSS science course, sixth grade. And we can see at the time that I pulled this report, these could have been covered in spring too. So we do that comparison. But district and building admin looked at, hey, MTSS ETS is important. Why are we not covering this standard? Why are there no assessments in this standard? Um, and so that course was 150. You only use seven of your 150 after the year. Do you need 150? Why do we have 150? Um, so this is a great report for that piece and allowed our building admin teams to then go into the PLCs and have some discussions as well with their content teams. This is another report um, that can be pulled at the building or the even the teacher level. One of the great things about um, teacher ease reports, they can be pulled by multiple people. There does not have to be one person who's in charge of running the graphs. Your, if you have content areas, if you have department time, if you have PLC time, it can be run by anyone and they can compare themselves across their school. To be able to compare across the district, you do need one from each side. But this is the histogram scores um, stand by standard, group by section. So each teacher time the teacher teaches a course, we're looking at a standard. So this has three different teachers in it. And I'm looking at it and I, I have one teacher who used it, kids are doing great. They've got the two tall green bars and so most of their kids are in the three. I have one teacher who teaches four sections and did not use this standard at all. And then I have one teacher who has four sections and has varying abilities in her class. And so they can sit down as a PLC and say, hey, we've been working on this standard. Why don't you have any data? What are you doing that all your kids got it? What, what, how many times more are we gonna hit the standard? And when can we look at this again? And so they can have all of these conversations with this report at their fingertips. <clears throat> For our PLC um, time, one of the questions that had come up um, that somebody had submitted was asking about where is time for PD? And so we have what we have uh, called early release Wednesdays. And so um, every Wednesday or almost every Wednesday without a holiday Monday kind of thing, uh, we have early release time where um, at least once a month or twice a month building PLCs get together uh, quarterly, sometimes a little bit more our district PLCs get together. And then we also have some prod time that we space throughout the year. And so we're really intentional on what um, data we've been collecting, talking about where our students are, what standards have we been hitting. So I just sat in on the math one yesterday um, where we looked at second semester standards and say, what have we not covered? Moving these students into next year, where will the gaps we already know will be because we didn't get to those standards. So we can pass that information on to the next um, year's teacher. Another one, um, standards-based score analysis. Um, you can use it to create goals for, um, if you use TPEP, uh, how is your uh, teacher evaluation? So you can pull these and use them as a focus for your evidence that you're gathering for your evaluation. Um, he says, no programming required. It's, there is no program required. It is drop down, pick your course, pick your standard. When do you want it run? How often do you want it run? Run it, that's, that's it. That's the screen you're looking at right there. Um, on the next slide there. So here's a PLC who picked a standard. We're gonna measure it over a chunk of time and we wanna know, are our students doing better in this standard because we've been focusing on it. So each bar represents a time a week that they've been working. Each time the data changes is when they've entered new assessment information. Um, and so then they can look at that as a department and really dig into where, where there's some gaps, uh, what students still need reassessment, where are we in terms of tracking the progress on this. Another functionality of teacher ease is the ability to communicate with families and students about progress. So there's a multitude of ways that you can communicate. There are email templates that you can set up so that you have a regular communication going out uh, from the teacher level as well as an admin level. Um, for the teacher, you can email a single student or multiple students. You can set criteria for how you, who you want to email. You can um, email directly from your gradebook. So you put in an assignment and the student gets a score and you wanna let them 
or the family know what's going on, you send an email, it will attach that information about that assessment to that email specific to that family or student and send that out as well. So uh, communication was another piece that you're not having to go back to Outlook or whatever your, your mail uh, server is. You can email directly from Teacher Ease. It'll keep a record of it there, but the replies will also go to your, your mail server. So the reply comes to Outlook so the teacher can continue responding there and doesn't have to log back and forth into the system to email. Um, just another graph that we find useful um, is a trend for overall course. We run these um, thinking about students who are struggling, um, working with a parent uh, last year of um, when, when did it all go downhill? What was going on? What happened? You can run an overall trend and kind of see those dips in the overall grade. Um, it's always kind of interesting. You run it right before sports season, like, and we're working on our grades right now. Um, so it's kind of showing the student there, like, I see you putting forth the effort. I see that improvement and, you, and putting that information in front of them. And then the last piece is about support. Um, we, we joke about no single source of truth. I am not the keeper of the grade book. I am not the only person you can turn to. Our, any teacher, any building administrator can call in, can email teacher ease and receive great support. Um, for me, I'm, we're assigned a person who's our contact person, so I can email him directly. I can also email the general support team and they'll get back to me. Um, so there's lots of different ways that you can connect with them to get support if you do run into an area or like, I'm always wondering, well, I wonder if we can do this. Like, I'm curious about Michelle's little donuts thing, right? I hadn't seen that. And I wonder what, what triggers that and whether or not I can use it with all the other tools that we're already doing. Um, and whether that's why I don't have access to it is it conflicts with something or can I add a donut because I really like that idea. So um, great support, great reaching out. Michelle, do you want to add anything to that? Yes, I agree 100%. Um, the tech support has been amazing. Um, for a few years there when we were developing the K-5 to report cards, doing one each year, I think I spent more time on the phone with my tech support person than I did my family. <laughs> and they were just, she was there. I, you know, I was paired with one that did a lot of the setup for me. And uh, we spoke all the time. She was there for me 110%. Um, when I needed something, when I had a question, she walked me through things step by step. If she wasn't available, I just went to the regular tech number and they jumped on and jumped in, no problem. Um, as we've rolled these report cards out, everyone knows I'm sure nothing runs as smoothly as you want it to every time. And so we'd be at grade reporting week and you know, teachers would say, this isn't showing me what I thought it would show me. And I would be like one minute and literally I would, you know, check in with teacheries and they would show me what I had entered incorrectly or they would fix a bug or whatever the problem was. Um, it was done within, you know, the hour. Um, so the open support from the tech team has been invaluable. And they also listen when there's something there that or not there that you need, that you would recommend that they add to their system, um, they will work towards putting in a, a tech report, you know, work order asking, can this be modified? Can this be added? And usually they're wanting to know that and they get it done. So it's well, been wonderful. Yeah. I, I, I love it. I, I want to set, I want to, the no single source of truth, I want to just kind of play on that is, just rem the one thing that Teacher Ease tries to do is we don't want everybody to ha have to go through a net or whatever the one tech person. So we want it to be easy to use that anybody can use it, but anybody can call in. So I just mm -hmm. want to reiterate that is that any of your teachers, we've even had parents call in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it we're there to help and support you. And I just wanted to speak to one point that Annette brought up and that was the parent portal. I just think that that is such an invaluable resource to parents. You know, it's no, no longer is it that they just wait for those report cards or progress reports to come home to know how their 
students doing um, on their work, they can plug into that parent portal anytime and see how the student, how their student is performing, where they're struggling, where they might need some help at home, um, where they, you know, and provides questions for teachers. You know, they know what to ask their teacher because they can look in the parent portal and see. So um, that's been a wonderful resource for the whole district. Well, well thank you. Say, there was one rough transition for us in terms of Teacher Ease does rely on parent family internet access where we had had a grade book that you could print out more information from. So it has been a challenge to, to shift that mindset and increase access for our families. So we have invested in hotspots, one-to-one -one technology for our kiddos. Um, and so there is kind of that, that push that Teacher Ease does require that login. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap it up here before we go into q and I'm gonna do my shameless plug. So uh, you know, Teacher Ease, you know, we are built for standards-based learning. We made it a made it a point to to build a separate solution from traditional. We added to it when, instead of trying to put everything into one one system. And so we really do want to make standards-based practices easier for everybody. And what we did is we built built it on a platform where you can have the foundation built where you're putting in your guaranteed and viable curriculum. So we didn't really talk about the piece where putting in the learning targets, having the rubrics and assessments and being able to have team collaboration on all of that. We, we provide the tools and the framework for you to, to do everything up front because then once you have that foundation, then the team can go in and leverage that data, store and leverage that data for standards-based learning, which is what a lot of what Michelle and Annette have been talking about. So the grade book, the analytics, the report card. Um, and I do wanna point out that we do have a learning management system and it does also integrate with Google Suite and Google Classroom. The Google Suite uh, is being introduced this spring. Uh, so we, not only do we do Google Classroom, but we also do Google Suite and uh, uh, integration. And so with that, let's go into the Q&A. And so let, I'm gonna, the nice thing is Annette and Michelle, they were proactive. They answered some of the questions that some of you asked ahead of time, but I do wanna see if there's any other questions that we didn't talk about in our session. And also I would love for you to add your questions in here. So, so one of the questions I have in here is what, what was the sequence of steps from the community engagement that you that you used for, for rollout? So the question here is, what was the sequence of steps from the community engagement all the way through the final rollout that, that, that you used? Uh, Michelle and Annette, either one of you can answer that. You want to, do you wanna start, Michelle? Sure, I think um, the way that our district rolled it out was very helpful for this reason. Um, you know, doing one grade level at a time, we, we focused on small chunks of the community. So we did a lot of um, online notifications. We did um, parent pamphlets. We did parent night at the schools to roll out what we were doing. And open houses had slideshows and pamphlets for um, parents in the community. Um, but it was very nice because starting at the kindergarten level, we had a small pool to begin with. And then as we rolled it up, the community and parents were ready for it at each grade level. Um, so that was a, a nice piece. For us, it was a replacement tool. So we did a lot more communication on how do you log into this system versus that system? How do you, what, what does the look like different? Where do you click to get information? Who do you ask for when you're stuck, when you can't log in? Um, sending out welcome emails, assigning a point person at the school who's in charge of getting those uh, students and families logged in for uh, teacher communication. For elementary, we did a group of um, our GLFs, grade level facilitators being our point people going out into the teachers, into their PLCs at the building um, to help roll that out. We did communications with families about what does the report card look like? How is it different? What is the same? 
what do, what do these things mean? And so did a lot of um, parent letters, um, back to school nights as well. Every fall we do, we have a pamphlet and a station um, at, at the middle school and high school just to make sure any new parents coming in um, as well as current parents, remember your login, um, get set up and have access to the system. Excellent, excellent. Um, feel free to keep throwing out your questions, gang. I, um, I've got another question here. And the question here is, how do you differentiate for different levels of abilities when you set up your standards? Sure, so one of the classes um, like in our support center has multi-grade, multi-ability students in it. And so how do you make a standard generic enough that it fits for everyone? So a great example was about money sense. All of the students are working on money sense in some way. And so for the reporting piece, we're reporting on their ability to use money sense. And then in the task, you can assign the task to the individual student on what about money sense are they doing? Are they counting back change? Are they um, working a till? Are they balancing their checkbook or bank account? Um, and so the task then gets assigned to that specific student under money sense. So as the teacher, I know what they're working on, but reporting out on the standard that they're using. Excellent. Do you want to add anything, Michelle? No, I agree with what Annette said. You know, the standard is what the standard is for the grade level, and it's just the skills and tasks that the teachers provide each student that shows their ability within that standard. Perfect. Now, and we're going to end on this last question because because I thought this one was was a fun question. Someone asked the question, "What what other uh, books should we read?" And I. I put together a list of books that are on my bookshelf. And so um, there is no right book. Um, there's lots of books, lots of ideas out there. Uh, and each of these authors probably has three or four books, if not more. I mean, so um, I can't say there's a, a, a right book, but I don't know if, if Michelle and Annette, if you've got a favorite book uh, that you, you wanna share with the folks. Well, I'm, I'm sure that there's different places in the journey that all of our viewers are at. Um, but one jumping off point for us was um, Ken O'Connor's book, A Repair Kit for Grading. This was wonderful. I actually did a book study with it with the admin in our district just to get everybody kind of in the mindset for standards-based learning and grading. Um, so Ken O'Connor is a wonderful resource along with, I love Rick Warmly and Tom Gusky and Myron Dweck. Any of those people will get you in the right direction. Annette, do you wanna throw any out? Oh no, I would just echo that. I think once you pick one, you go and read another and you go and read another and you go and read another <laughs> until you're immersed in it. And just you're taking what, what your system is currently at and adapting until you get into that standards-based learning and grading um, and I just want to really push on it's not just about the grading piece. It's going to be about it's a it's a whole cycle on learning, assessment, grading, and reporting. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Michelle and Annette. This was very informative. So thank you so much for sharing your your story with with all of our our listeners today. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to give me a, a ring. My name again, it's Joe Granda. My email address is at the bottom here on the on this page you'll get a follow-up email all of all of the session was recorded uh, so you'll get a copy of the slides as well as the recording and uh, again thank you all for for attending have yourselves a wonderful day <laughs>